Hello, hello, and welcome. Tonight, it is time for Sharp Points, taken from Proverbs 27 and 17, that declares that iron sharpeneth iron, so that the man sharpen the countenance of his friend. You and I are here tonight to make each other better. You don't want to be hanging out with people who are trying to agitate you, irritate you, and cause you to go down. You and I need to connect with people who really have our best interests in mind, who wants us to who want us to grow spiritually and want us to grow naturally. And that's why we're here tonight. And tonight is a special special night. We know that a lot is going on in our country, of course. So much for you and I to be praying about. Of course, we need to pray for those who homes and stuff were demolished due to the fact of a tornado hitting the area of um, Birmingham, Alabama. We need to pray for those. And of course, we need to continually pray for those families who have gone through experiencing the loss of their loved ones due to the shooting that took place in Colorado. Let's pray for these people. Let's continually, amen, pray that God's grace will cover those families and strengthen them and cause them to be able to go on with their life, with their lives and be productive in life. I am Bishop Van Sharp. I'm the pastor and founder of one of the greatest churches in all the world. And I know you feel like that if you are part of a local assembly, but we're part of, amen, one of the greatest churches in all the world. Newness of Life Christian Center located at 936 Amal Avenue in the wonderful city of Tarboro. And I am honored, amen, to be able to talk to you tonight. We're going to have a word of prayer and go right into tonight's message. Again, I want you to get on that phone as always. Text somebody, call somebody, make that connection with those that you sincerely care about. I believe that whatever you help make happen for others, as Dr. Ivy Hill used to say, whatever you good thing you make happen for others, God will make that good thing happen for you. So you and I want to help other people grow, develop, mature, and receive their inheritance. As an heir of God, we have an inheritance in Christ. And in order for us to get it, we have to be men and women who really, really hunger and thirst after it. So let's be hungry tonight. Let's be thirsty tonight. Let's text somebody, call somebody, email them and share this message with them. Hit that subscribe button, hit that share button, hit that like button, hit those buttons that will connect you with somebody else. All right. Amen. Father, I thank you tonight that you will indeed think through my mind. Speak through my lips. I surrender and submit to you like never before that you might have your way tonight. Touch that woman. Touch that man that's watching tonight. Touch that child. Touch that boy, that girl, that grandbaby, that grandson, that granddaughter. Thank you for making truth come alive to them tonight. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. All right. Again, for those of you who may be watching us for the first time tonight, we've authored 13 exciting books. That's right. Our latest three I want to push out to you real quick. And that is one entitled Death, A Need to Understand. And the other one is entitled Long Distance Runner, Running This Race for the Long Haul, Running to Receive the Prize. The Bible said in a race day all run. But we are the run that we may obtain for one receive the prize. And we want to get the prize. We want to lay hold of eternal life. And of course, they discipline themselves. They get themselves in shape. They discipline their mind. They discipline their body to get a corruptible crown. But Paul, the apostle, said that we are to discipline ourselves, bring our bodies under subjection to get the incorruptible crown. And that's what we want. Also, our latest one that just been out maybe about a week and a half. Amen. No more than two weeks. Amen. It's entitled Let the Prophet Speak. Show us our way. This book is a must read for those of you who are serious about winning in life because we do need 
a sure word of prophecy. That's the written word spoken out of men and women who really are hearing from God. But we need the prophetic word. Paul, the apostle, spoke about through prophecies, through prophecies, we're able to fight or wage a good warfare. So we need, amen, the word of the Lord. At any rate, tonight we're going to be talking from <clears throat> one of our 13 books. And this one is entitled Women of Substance Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. We know that this month is a celebration of women who have helped change our world, help reform our world. And so they're honoring women this whole month. And I think it only right to encourage women to build up women. I believe that only little boys, amen, try to belittle women. In fact, I got a quote in here about that. Amen. That's so powerful. And I believe that whenever you are able to grow and mature in the Lord, you want to help women because many of the things that we see in our society that have been done and accomplished has been done due to women stepping up to the plate and being in place and doing what is necessary. <clears throat> it's, it's a quote by Steve Maraboli. For those of you that got your book now, some of you that are watching, <clears throat> you are ladies. I told you to get your book, get your book out. Amen. Yeah. Call your girlfriends. Yeah. Vanika, call your girlfriends, all of those that you care about. Let's make this connection tonight. Amen. And we're talking about uh, a woman's persistence. That's what we're going to talk about tonight out of this book, a woman's persistence. And there's a lot we can say about that. But <clears throat> Steve Maraboli. And I'm on page 29 reading this quote that he made. Steve Maraboli said, only insecure boys will belittle a woman. The greatest way to man up is to empower women. Well, I said in this book, real men want to see women flourish. They desire to see those women who aren't uh, spreading gossip or causing chaos to be a beacon in the night. Real men know when they do this, they are doing themselves a favor. So we want women to rise up, take their place in the kingdom, take their place in life in a special way. Now, again, the book is entitled Women of Substance. I won't be able to cover all of it tonight. Again, Amen. It's only twelve dollars. You can get a copy by uh, connecting with our church. Two, five, two, six, four, one, zero, zero, nine, eight. It's called Women of Substance. Taking new steps to new dimensions. All right. Now, in this book, I talk about uh, many, many different things. And I'm going to just cover some of these uh, things that I talk about again. I, I start the book out by a quote by Dan, uh, Dan Coyote, who said, what man can pretend to know the rhythm, the rhythms of a woman's mind? In other words, we as men, I as a man, I just speak for myself, am not trying to pretend like I know what a woman think. But I do know a man a very brilliant, strong and talented women who are in my life and who I've known a man for many, many years. My mother's one. My wife is one. My sister is one. A man. And, and my sister in laws are women, are women. So I understand how valuable and necessary you truly, truly are. You are and you are a valuable commodity. We need you. Men can't be who God wants them to be without the help and the support of great women. And uh, the word substance that's used as I'm talking about in this book, and y'all that got a book again, let me go to the right page so I can give you that page uh, is on page 20. I'm on page 20 for those ladies that got a book tonight or men. 
who got a book because a lot of times if we if a man studied this book, he will understand many, many different things about uh, women. I talk about uh, five areas where uh, women see as important to them and five areas where men see as important to us. All of that is in this book. I won't cover that tonight, but it's in this book. OK, shout out to Melody Hatchell, Minister Danny, uh, Mike Montana, uh, Ladorius Leonard tonight and Latoya Baptist. Glad to know you all are watching. Is that Toya? Oh, hey, Toy, Toy. Amen. I hope you got one of these books. I'm not sure you whether you do or not. Amen. A wonderful young lady. Amen. A pastor, her mother for many, many years and her grandmother who gone on to be with the Lord, Mary Alice Brown. Amen. Yeah. All right. And men, you can get some out of what we're going to teach you tonight as we talk about a woman's persistence. Now, listen, the word substance. We're, I'm on page 20 now. I'm on page 20. Amen. All right. OK, I'm on page 20. <clears throat> Glory to God. All right. The word substance mean substantial or solid character or quality. Substance is something that has separate or independent existence. Now, that's very important as you relate to your womanhood. Substance is something that has separate or independent existence. It's the essential part of a thing. Women of substance. It also means your possessions, your means or your wealth. Our nation has truly been blessed and elevated by women of substance. And we should be anxious to see the new areas of grace that women will walk or flow in next. What's the next area of grace that you are about to flow in? Amen. That the devil is intimidated about, scared of you, frightened by you. Amen. Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am, and this is in the book on page 20, all that I am and all that I ever hope to be, I owe to my mother. So you think about how many men you seen men after they win the Super Bowl, after they win the major league uh, pennant, after they win the uh, the championship in baseball or basketball, they always shout out to their mother. Why? Because they understand that it's the mother's persistence that has helped them get to this place. Hallelujah. Wow. What a what potent words spoken by one of our greatest presidents of all time. These words aren't just his sentiments, but the sentiments of millions of men who have accomplished great things because of a mother or a woman's sacrifice. Many of you know. You where you are because of a mother's sacrifice, because a woman made a great sacrifice for you. I'm where I am because of my mother's great sacrifice. I know my wife is where she is because of her mother, basically raising her and making sacrifices for her. Amen. We understand how important you truly are. Shout out to Curtis Bryant, uh, Tanikia Hinton and Shamika Lord. Latoya Baptist, that's a friend of Vanika. Okay, Latoya Baptist is a friend of Vanika's. Okay, that's not uh, Latoya that we thought. Okay, sorry about that, Latoya. Amen, but we do honor who you are. Glad to know that you're a friend of Vanika. Please keep watching, okay? It was a woman, catch this, it was a woman who had to make a sacrifice to bring our great high priest, Jesus Christ, into the world. That woman made a sacrifice, a great one. I, her name was Mary. She was indeed a woman of solid character. So when we talk about a woman of substance, we're talking about a woman of solid character. Mary was a woman of solid character and a woman who played an essential part in the plan of Jesus arriving on the scene. She sacrificed her body as a living sacrifice to be used without any, again, sexual intercourse with any man until after Jesus was born. She saved herself 
and was willing to sacrifice her body to to push and to bring forth Jesus Christ into the world. The Bible called her a virgin in Matthew chapter one, verses 23 and 24 and 25. Matthew chapter one, verses 23 through 25 says, behold, a virgin shall be with child and she shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn and he called his name Jesus. So Joseph didn't ever sleep with Mary until after Mary gave birth to Jesus. What a sacrifice. This woman had to yield to the plan of God. So we understand that for our nation to be what it is and for many of our sons and daughters to be successful and to go to college and receive their degrees and achieve great things. Many women have made tremendous sacrifices. Many of you have been there when the man hasn't been there. Many of you have been there with support and with words of encouragement as well as with your finances when many men haven't been there. This woman Mary was willing to surrender and risk it all for Jesus sake. She was willing to even lose her future husband, Joseph, in order to obey God. Mary wanted the will of God to be done in her life. And so it is my prayer that many of you ladies, when you get this book, that you will know and understand that God is calling you to another dimension. Even in this hour, God is raising up women and putting them on platforms and giving them positions that before their gender was a hindrance or held them back. But today, many men are understanding that, hey, there are women who have the grace, who have the skills, who have the know-how to do the job. And whenever you want someone to do the job, amen, then you won't consider or let their gender be a hindrance to their promotion. Let me say it again. Whenever you want someone to do the job, you won't allow their gender to be a hindrance to their promotion. And that's my prayer for women, that God will promote you on the left, promote you on the right, because you've been there when men sometimes have dropped the ball. Not in every case, men have dropped the ball. We got some good fathers and some good providers out here, but so many aren't. And I salute you ladies that are in place doing what is necessary to push your family and your children forward. I believe that it will start in your spirit, but it will make its way to your pocketbook and bank account as well. And uh, the Lord spoke this word to me approximately two years ago. Now I wrote this book uh, in uh, this book was released in, 2017. So it means it would probably finish in 2016. Had to get to the publisher, get out in 2017. That's the way it works. Amen. And then two years in front of that. So we're talking about in 2014. Watch what the Lord was telling me back in 2014. The Lord spoke this word to me approximately two years ago that he was raising up women of substance. He said, These women will not be gold diggers or need men for their money or their substance. That's important. These women that God was said he was raising up were not many would not be gold diggers. Amen. Not need men for their money or substance. They will not have to be raising kids or taking care of a home with scarceness or lack. But these women would be empowered with great substance. When you study the Bible, there were women in the Bible who had great substance. When you study the book of Luke, you will find there were women who had great, great substance. It has been said, watch this, it's been said, money only impresses lazy girls. When a woman works hard, a man with money is a bonus not a ladder to upgrade. This is in this book. It's important that you know this. 
It's been said money only impresses lazy girls. One thing my wife said to me all the time, she said, hey, I, I didn't marry you for your money because I had money before I before I knew you. I had my own. She had her own job, had her own car. You see what I'm saying? So so had her own savings account and all that. So but I do know that as a husband, it is my job to be a provider and a protector. Shout out to Melinda Burt, Cedric Wooden, Veronica Nichols, Letitia. Bony. All right. Shout out to you ladies. All right. Money only impresses lazy girls when a woman works hard. And many of you ladies, you do. You work very hard. A man with money is a bonus, not a ladder to upgrade. Hallelujah. And that's why we tell people that women that read this book that you didn't just pick this book up. God picked you out among women to tell you that you will be a woman of great substance or great means. Listen at me, ladies. Don't ever doubt with or without a man. You will be a woman of substance. You will be a woman of character. You will be a woman with great means and great possessions. Say that about yourself. I am a woman of substance. That's right. I'm a woman of character. I'm a woman that's going to have great means and great possessions. Hallelujah. Yes, your time has come. Victor Hugo said all the forces in the world are not so powerful as an idea whose time has come. You as a woman have more to offer this nation, your community, your church and your family. Where would our churches today be without women? Think about it now. Where would our local assemblies be today without women? Where would our families be without women? Where would our communities be without women? Where would our nation be without women? Hallelujah. You as a woman are too powerful and have too much potential on the inside of you to let it stay hidden. The groanings and sufferings of our society are crying out for you to release all the gifts and the graces that God has given you. Romans 8 and 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. I like what Elizabeth Elliot say. I talk about that in this book. Elizabeth Elliot says this and I'm on. uh, Let me get this page here. That she said this on. I want to make sure I give it to you. Glory to God. I like this quote. Shout out to Velma Whitley, uh, Tash Mir Jordan, uh, Evangelist Jackie Bellamy. Amen. Good to know you're watching. And Vincent Bellamy. All right, men are watching. Yeah, I'm not putting all the NOLCC in there because y'all shout out to all the NOLCC uh, family. All right. We appreciate you. I'm on page 22 now. I'm reading some on page 22, a quote by Elizabeth Elliot. And this is a powerful quote. The fact that I'm a woman doesn't make me a different kind of Christian. But the fact that I'm a Christian does make me a different kind of woman. That's powerful. If you're a Christian woman, that's what makes you a different lady. Christ in you. The hope of glory. That's what makes you a woman of character. And a woman of character makes God a number one priority. This is in this book. A woman of character makes God a number one priority. She understands that she lives, moves, and have has her being in Christ. She defines herself. A woman of character does. Defines herself by her ongoing relationship with Christ. He is the vine and she is the branches. Now, remember, Abigail was chosen because she was a woman full of content. There's a section here where I talk about full of content. It's like you reading a book. Some books have a beautiful uh, outward cover, but inside there's no content. And then there are other books who don't have a beautiful cover, but inside there's content. I want you to understand who you are. You are a woman who have both 
outward beauty and inward beauty. You are a woman full of content. Hallelujah. Listen, uh, Abigail was a lady like that. She was beautiful outwardly and she was beautiful inwardly. She was a woman full of content. Yes, she was beautiful outwardly, but she was also a woman of good understanding. If you read the Bible in 1 Samuel 25 and verse number three, the Bible said, now the name of the man was Nabal and Nabal means fool. And sometime as a lady, <clears throat> you connect with a man who's a fool, who doesn't understand your value, who doesn't understand your worth. And amen. She was a wise, beautiful woman, but she was connected to a man whose name means fool. And the name of his wife was Abigail. Abigail, she was a woman of good understanding. This is in verse three, first Samuel 25 verses two and three. This is in the book. Amen. On page 23. All right. <clears throat> she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. He was of the house of Caleb. Now, the word for understanding that's used about Abigail here is the is the Greek word sekel, S-E-K-E-L. All of this is in the book. This is on page uh, 24. I'm on page 24. Uh, the scripture I gave you was 1 Samuel 25 verses 2 and 3. 1 Samuel 25 verses 2 and 3. The, under, the word understanding is the masculine noun, sikel, which means wisdom, prudence, insight, and success. So the woman was insightful. The woman was prudent. In other words, Abigail was a successful woman because of her insight. She was successful before she married Nabal. That's important. She was successful before she married Nabal. In fact, the word Abigail means father. The father is joy. The father is joy. This woman's outward beauty and her inward intelligence brought joy to everyone. She was more than a beautiful face. She had wisdom and grace. I'm talking to some ladies like that. You're more than a beautiful face. You got wisdom and you got grace. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I definitely believe that without her being in the life of Nabal, Nabal would have been lost everything and would have died. But because Abigail was in his life, you know, Abigail kept a lot of men from getting killed because of her wisdom, because of her prudence, because of her insightfulness. When she heard, she never saw the men who came that David sent looking for food, looking to be taken care of. And when she heard about what Nabal had done, because Nabal told David's men he wasn't giving them anything. And David was so mad and upset that David said, let's go in there and let's kill every man that pisses against the wall. This is in your Bible. But Abigail sent the head and sent food and other things to, to David. And David chose this great woman. He chose this great woman. And praise this great woman because of her strength, because she was a gracious woman. See, and in Proverbs 11 and 16, the Bible said a gracious woman retaineth honor and strong men retain riches. A gracious woman retains honor. The Amplified says a gracious and good woman wins honor for her husband. And violent men win riches, but a woman who hates righteousness is a throne of dishonor for him. This is uh, Proverbs 11 and 16. Proverbs 11 and 16. I'm still on page 24 if you got this book. All of this is in this book. Amen. I got to get to uh, the whole subject tonight is a woman's persistence because I want to brag on you tonight and encourage you tonight. To stay persistent, to be, continue to be a, ten, a woman of tenacity, a woman who don't get. I know I know a lot of things are hidden in your life as a lady to try to make you quit, 
to try to make you cave in, to make try to make you feel like what's the use? I'm trying. I'm putting forth every effort. I don't have the help and support of my husband. He's not helping me do this, not helping me do this. But I want to encourage you tonight to stay persistent, to stay steadfast, stay unmovable. I know a lot is on many of you. You're trying to take care of your sick mother, your sick cousin, and all this weight of all this is on you. Amen. A lot of financial weight of taking care of your sons and daughters. But I want to encourage you tonight to be a persistent woman. There's a section in this book called a woman's persistence. All right. But before I get to that, I want to read something to you here. Steve Maraboli said the empowered woman. I'm on page 25 now. The empowered woman. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. The empowered woman is powerful beyond measure and beautiful beyond description. And that's what we want to do. Empower you as a woman tonight. Again, you may be like Abigail. She was married to a man, Nabal, whose name means fool. So you may be married to a hard headed man, a stubborn man, a man who's foolish. Amen. But I want you to stay persistent, stay persistent. Your persistence is going to get you to your destiny in spite of him, in spite of him, in spite of him not doing. I'm telling you, my mother got us there in spite of my daddy. My daddy drank, my daddy cursed, my daddy fussed. Amen. And eventually he ended up dead. And my mother brought us, her children, to our destination with him in her life. All she was able to manage to get was an apartment. But when he when he got out of her life, she took us to that next level and owned her home. Hallelujah. All right. So we want you to continue to be like an Abigail in spite of a neighbor. All right. Listen, notice Abigail didn't desire money or anything from David. She had money, nor did she desire David because he was handsome. Listen, she never asked David to marry her at all. Instead, it was David who desired her after the death of her husband. He didn't desire Abigail because of her outward beauty, even though Abigail was beautiful. David wanted her because he saw her as a blessed woman full of content or full of good advice. Notice first Samuel 25, 32 uh, through 33. All right. Okay. Now I'm not telling you as a woman to stay in an abusive relationship where somebody is yelling at you, fussing at you, cursing at you. No, 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 no. But but they need to understand who you are and understand your value. You are in his life to help him. You are good advice to him. Listen at what the Bible said. And David said to Abigail, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. And blessed be thy advice and blessed be thou which has kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with my own hand. David is talking this in first Samuel 25 verses 32 and 33. He's saying that the reason why he's such so attracted to this woman is not because of her outward beauty, but because she has good advice. Oh my goodness. In other words, Abigail stood out in the mind of David because of her prudence. She was able to protect David and his men from killing innocent men through her intercession and the gifts that she brought to David. See, women, listen at me, women, continue to intercede, continue to go to God on behalf of your children, continue to pray. Come on, don't just depend on grandma prayers, grandpa prayers, cousin Fred prayers. 
You need to be an intercessor, a woman who talked to God about everything. Remember, many of the things that you're facing in life, God is just one prayer away, waiting to hear your voice. Study the Bible. When Ruth, uh, I'm sorry, not Ruth, but when uh, the Bible speaks of Samuel's mother, Hannah, Hannah name means favored. Hannah cried out to God because she wanted a child and she was being picked at by Penina. And Hannah prayed to God and God heard Hannah's cry and blessed her to have a son by the name of Samuel. And that's what God would do today. God will hear your prayer, woman of God. God listens for you to cry out to him. When, when you're not having that help that you need from that man, maybe he's drinking up all the money. Maybe he's messing up and blowing cash. I never get my mother to always say, she said, I can't do nothing with Eddie Frank. She said, but I can talk to God. I never forget. She said, I can't tell Eddie Frank nothing. I can't tell your daddy nothing. He's going to do whatever he want to do. Hallelujah. But my mother was praying to God and God heard her cry. And she sent all three of her children to college. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got to know how blessed you are. Now, let's get into this as I talk about a woman's persistence. OK, every woman, hear me, every woman, not just a single woman, not just a married woman, but every woman, every woman. If you're a woman, listen at this prophet. Listen at this man of God tonight. Every woman. Must be bullish on being a woman. Be bullish on being a woman. In other words, you have to be tenacious. I'm going to give you a definition that I didn't put in this book, but it, you need to know, amen, the definition of this word persistence so we'll know, be on the same page tonight. I want to give you this definition and I want to give you some synonyms of this word. I was looking at it earlier today. This word persistence means the continuance of an effect after its cause is removed. The synonyms of this word uh, persistence is grit. I preach a message. It's on Facebook Live called uh, I've Got Grit. Uh, another definition is endurance, constancy, uh, resolute. Stamina, tenacity. That's what I'm talking about. A woman has to be that way. And God will reward your persistence. God created women so that they will be persistent. I, I know there have been times when my wife and I go to a new restaurant and we're eating something that, uh, yeah, before COVID. I better make that clear. We don't go now. Mm -hmm. Amen. But before COVID. I listen, I had never eaten frog legs before in my life till I married her. She 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 persisted in me trying. Went to a place she had some and she said, try it. Well, you know, at first I'm no, no, no. But this lady's persistence, her continuance, her mind to say, you're gonna try this no matter what. I'm pushing her away. No, Reese, I don't want it. I don't want to get it out of the way. No, come on, come on, please, please. Her persistence. Eventually made me give in. Same thing that happened to Adam. You know, Eve were persistent about him eating that fruit. Don't you don't don't believe that Adam just took the fruit immediately. I don't believe that. I believe when that woman offered him that fruit, Adam probably said, no, no, no. But because he knew the he knew the mind of God. He knew that God told him of all the trees of the field he could eat of all the trees of the garden. Rather, he could eat of except this one. Amen. But women are persistent. Thank God you are because you got to be that way in order to get some things done and accomplished. And so I remember years ago when my wife gave birth to uh, our daughter, our one and only daughter, Vanika. And I saw that travail that women have to endure to bring life into the world. Man, I'm telling you, for a woman to bring life here on earth, could grace the mighty. They go through some serious travail 
And a lot of times it's easy for men who don't ever go back there and see what a woman goes through to talk about having a number and a number because they ain't seen the process. But when you see what a woman truly goes through to birth life, to bring life here on the earth, the travail that they take their bodies through in pushing a, a baby out of their womb. It is absolutely something to behold as you watch a woman go through painful contractions and eventually have to push as hard as they can at the doctor's request. It is totally amazing. I remember asking my wife during this ordeal, if God would allow you to come back to this planet again, would you like to be a man or a woman? Now I'm thinking, Surely after she went through all this, she's going to say, oh, yeah, I would love to be a man because I ain't got to be pregnant. I ain't got to, my body ain't got to go through no contractions. I don't have to push a baby out. Amen. I was expecting her to say something like, are you kidding me? Of course, I would love to come back to this planet as a man. However, to my surprise, my wife told me that she would definitely want to come back as a woman. I couldn't believe it. I tried to remind her of the pain that I just saw her go through, that I just saw her endure. Amen. All this is in this book. I, I tried to remind her of the fact that as a woman, you have to endure nine months of labor. As a woman, many of you ladies know what I'm talking about. You go through menstrual cycles, all of this. I reminded her that she had to carry Van Nico around inside her womb. And as a man, I didn't have to do that. You don't go down nine months of labor. You don't do that. I mean, what did, what did I say? You said nine months of labor. Oh, I'm sorry. You had to endure nine months of carrying the baby. All right. All right. Okay, nine good. Nine That's right. Not nine months. Of <laughs> all right. I tried to remind her of the fact that a woman has to endure menstrual cycles every month, but a man doesn't. Yet none of these things made my wife desire to be a man or wish that she could trade genders with me. In fact, she sat up on her bed with great pause and was in a bullish attitude and said, I love being a woman. And there is nothing that you can say that could ever make me want to come back to this planet as a man. In other words, I saw a woman who was bullish on being a woman. That's what we need. Women who are bullish on being a woman. You're glad that you're a woman. You thank God that you're a woman. And if God would give you another opportunity to come back, you would want to be a woman. In our society today, we need women or uh, we need women who are bullish about their role as a single woman or a married woman, or a mother, or a grandmother. Notice I did not say that we need women who behave like cows, which are the female counterpart of a bull. But instead, we need a woman's bullish persistence. A bull, watch this, a bull is a persistent animal. What did I just say? A bull is a persistent animal. Many people have a common mis. Conception about a bull's behavior. A bull keeps going at that cape that that matador is swinging. Now, he's not moving. I used to think that a bull, before I wrote this book, Women of Substance, Taking New Steps and New Dimensions, I thought that the bull is going after that cape because it's a red cape. And I thought that the bull was seeing that red cape and moving behind that cape because it was red and being swung. But I did not know that the bull chases that cape that the metal door is swinging forth, not because of the color of it, because a bull is colorblind. I didn't know that a bull is a colorblind animal. Shout out to Kelly Howard. But he's moving after that cape because it's in motion. And in this book, I talk about a bullish woman is not going to be a woman that's going to. Follow a man that's not moving, a man that's not taking action. You want a man that is leading the way, showing the way and 
are out here doing what it takes to have movement because you are a, a persistent woman. Hallelujah. Listen, in fact, in this book, let me see what page this is on here. Glory to God, because this is good. This is good. This is good. All right. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm on page 31. For those of you that have a book, I got to quit. I, gotta, I only have a few minutes left here. Listen. It has been said, one person said this, don't be a woman that needs a man, but be a woman a man needs. Do you catch what I just said? This is powerful. What did I just say? It's worth a million dollars. That quote, that statement in this book is worth home. Oh, listen, don't be a woman. That needs a man. Be a woman. A man needs. See. If you around a man. That don't feel like he needs you. He's going to mistreat you. He's going to abuse you. Because he thinks he don't need you. But all you need to do. Is just be that woman. That a man needs. Amen. And every nation. Needs a persistent woman. Every nation needs a persistent woman. Every man needs a persistent woman. Every child needs a persistent woman. A woman that won't quit. A woman that won't throw in the towel. A woman that won't faint along the way. Glory to God. Every child needs a persistent mother. They will move with what is moving instead of die with what is dying. Let me say that again. That statement, that right there statement in this book. Oh my God, you hear that revelation? They will move. A persistent woman will move with what is moving because they refuse to die with what is dying. Nabal died by himself. Abigail kept it moving. Listen at me, women. Keep it moving. Man, act a fool. Keep it moving. Man won't help you with the rent. Keep it moving. Man won't help you with the mortgage payment. Keep it moving. Man won't help you with the car payment. Keep it moving. Hallelujah. Because remember, you were created to help him, which means what? Man needed the woman. The woman didn't need the man. Well, y'all didn't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. A lot of our prisons are full of men. You know why they're full of some men? They didn't never find a persistent woman. They didn't, they didn't find a good woman or they didn't treat that good woman the way she should have been treated. And now they're in prison paying a price. Listen at me now. Luke 18. I'm reading Luke 18 verses 2 through 5. This, listen. This unjust judge, this is a story about this woman's persistence. There was a persistent woman. She was a widow and she comes to this unjust judge asking this Luke 18 verses 2 through 5. Listen, saying there was in a city a judge which feareth not God. In the book, this is on page 31. I started right there on 31 and go into page 32. Listen at what it says here. Yes. Yeah. There was a, in a city a judge which feareth not God, neither regardeth man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Now notice, this unjust judge did not fear God, neither did he regard man. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Glory to God. You see how persistent this woman was? This woman is so persistent that the judge is saying, I'm, I'm not scared of God. I don't have a reverence for God, nor do I have any kind of regard for man. So I'm not doing it because I'm reverencing God. I'm not even doing it because I regard man. 
But this woman's persistence, she keeps coming back. Listen at me, ladies. I want to encourage you tonight to keep going after your dream. I want to encourage you tonight to keep going after what God has shown you concerning your future. I want to encourage you tonight to let no man or no situation or no circumstance make you throw in the towel. I want to encourage you to be refueled, to get your strength back, to gird back up your loins. Amen. To be refreshed. Glory to God. To get renewed in the spirit of your mind. I know there's been a lot on you. I know there's been a lot that you're trying to take care of and manage. But I want to encourage you tonight to keep at it. Don't quit. Don't surrender to the enemy. Because if you give up, the enemy will win. But don't give up. Stand strong. Stay focused. Stay persistent. Be uh, persistent because your persistence is going to be rewarded. Keep going to God. Keep calling on the name of the Lord. Keep in God's face because God will turn it around. Hallelujah. Yeah. Keep forging ahead. Listen, it is important for us to realize this. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout out to Wayne Evans Jr. One of my classmates from Delaware. Good to know you're watching, sir. Amen. He knows he's where he is because of his mother. Mothers are so important. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, this guy had probably a reputation of being unjust and unfair. The whole community probably knew about him, but it did not stop this widow woman from going to him with her problem. He told this woman, no, on more than one, one occasion. No, I would not avenge you. But the woman kept coming back, kept coming back. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to believe that. I remember in that movie, I talk about in, that, uh, in this book about the movie Enough. In the movie Enough, Jennifer Lopez, she was being trained by a trainer as to how to win against her husband who was punching her and beating her and doing those evil wicked things to her. That's a good movie called Enough. Amen. But anyway, amen. The trainer told her what to do after she was attacked. All right. Yeah. 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 Because somebody may not have seen the movie. That's right. I'll, I'll spoil it for you. OK. Yeah. He was telling her how to train and telling her, amen, how Amen. To fight to the finish. In other words, the devil, your adversary, deserves no mercy for all the havoc that he has tried to present in your life and mine. We don't show the devil any mercy. He needs to be dealt with thoroughly and on a daily basis because he's tried to humiliate you as a lady. He tries to he tries to humiliate you. Amen. Hallelujah. And now you must punish that devil every chance you get and at every turn available to you. Listen, you have to have the confidence and the persistence to do it. Hallelujah. Listen at this. I'm quoting something again in the book on page 33. Jim Lohr said with confidence you can reach truly amazing heights without confidence. Even the simplest accomplishment are beyond your grasp. Mandy Hale said this. I'm on page 33. A confident woman, a woman who truly knows her worth and her power is a force to be reckoned with. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to encourage you tonight. I'm out of time, not out of message, not out of teaching. But I do want to say this to you tonight. Get this book. It's called Women of Substance, Taking New Steps to New Dimensions. And those of you who already got it, continue to read it. In this book, I talk about uh, there's a quote that real queens, they don't try to uh, take a, here's the exact quote. I'm on page 49 
On page 49, Michelle Fields said this, real queens, and that's what you are, lady. That's who you are, woman of God. Real queens don't step on others to achieve the crown. Real queens don't step on others to achieve the crown. In other words, this is a day and time when women need to encourage other women. Build that woman up on your job. Build that woman up in the church. Encourage each other because being a woman is important right now like it had never been before. And that's who you are. And I hope you love being a woman, enjoy being a woman, and accept the challenge ahead and know that your persistence will pay off. The Bible says, hear what the unjust judge says. How much more will God avenge his very own elect who cry out to him day and night? I tell you, he will avenge you. He will come through for you, woman of God. Think about it. In the book of Kings, that woman who was persistent, she went after that man of God because her boy was dead. And when she got to the man of God, amen, she told him, it's well with my husband, it's well with me, it's well with my child. The boy was dead. But the woman's persistence got her there. She refused to leave till she got to the prophet. When the other man came out, the servant of the prophet came out. Amen. She told him it shall be well. When she got to the prophet, she said it is well. Your persistence will get you to who you need to get to for doors to open up, for favor to come forth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the adversary is against women. Listen at me now. Yes, he's against men, but he's also against women because you're carrying so much and there's so much in you that you need to give birth to. And Satan hates that. The Bible said it was the seed of the woman that would bruise the devil's head. But the devil will attack the woman just like he attacks the church. The church is a picture and a shadow of the woman. Glory to God. And the enemy attacks the church. Why? Because he knows the church is to give birth to sons and daughters that would change the world. You are a game changer. In this book, I talk about a section called being a game changing woman. Do you know who you are? You are a game changing woman. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I talk about being pretty and not petty. You're not petty. You're pretty inside and out. Glory to God. I talk about being a smart woman in silly times. Smart means a significant, multitasking, authentic, revolutionary treasure. I talk about, amen, how that you need to look to anointed uh, women of God. I talk about taking new steps to new dimensions. Madam C.J. Walker said, I got my start when I gave myself a start. That's on page 82. In other words, you don't ever get started till you get started. <laughs> oh, man, there's so much good stuff in this book. I am out of time, not out of teaching you. Ladies, women, let's go make history. Come on, let's make history. Let's make something happen. I want to encourage you tonight to get this book. And some of you got this book. I want to tell you to log on to uh, Linda Brinson's Facebook page. Linda Brinson is a great woman of God that's a part of Newness of Life Christian Center, and she has a Facebook page. On her Facebook page, amen, you can get some beautiful items that even the more solidify and speak towards you being a woman of substance. Amen. And uh, great stuff up there to encourage women, as well as there's stuff up there for men. We as men, we can go on, look on Linda uh, Brinson's uh, Facebook page. She has some stuff up there from uh, my book, I Am My Brother's Keeper. I got it somewhere here. Yeah. I Am My Brother's Keeper, empowering men to take their place. But tonight we're not talking about men, but go to their Facebook page. I mean, not her. Yeah, her Facebook page. Yeah. Glory to God. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she got one call, uh, one T-shirt and stuff you can get called. I'm not bossy. I am, I am the boss. Amen. Because a lot of time when a woman is in a position of authority, she's accused of being too bossy and everything else. 
But the thing says, I'm not bossy. I'm the boss. Push it up. Oh, yeah. All this good stuff up here. Scroll up. Yeah. Push I had to up. scroll back down because I'm not getting anything when I go up. All right. Anyway, go to the go to the Facebook page. Okay? Go to the Facebook page and watch all that good stuff that she has. All right? Mm -hmm. Amen. And be willing to pay. Amen. To get it. Because... You ought to be like David. David said, I don't want nothing that ain't going to cost me nothing. Sometimes you got to pay the price so you can value it. All right. So check out her Facebook page and look at that good looking stuff up there and wear those kind of T-shirts and stuff that really significant, significifies uh, who you are. Yeah, women of substance stuff is up there. All right. Thank you, ladies, for listening tonight. Be that persistent woman. Don't give up on your dream. Don't quit on what you're believing God for. Fight the good fight of faith. Be persistent. Go after it. Go after it with all you might. Go after it with all your strength. Tell that devil in spite of my husband cutting the food, acting crazy, I will own my own house. Tell that devil in spite of my husband acting foolish, I will be wealthy. Tell that devil in spite of kids and other situations trying to get the best of me. I will raise these kids. I will not give up on my children. I will raise them. They will be quality men, quality ladies. They will make a difference in the world. Your persistence is what we need. If you quit, where will we be? So many men have quit on the family. So many men have quit. Where will we be if you quit? Where would my sister and I and my brother and I and my little sister and I be if my mother would have quit? Man, thank God my mama didn't quit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for these women that are watching tonight who are not going to quit. A woman's persistence. Thank God for you. Hallelujah. All right. Now, if you're a lady and you're not saved, or a man, and you're not saved, but you desire to be saved, I appreciate those of you that have been calling this number. Now, you call this number, 252-563-5382. 252-563-5382. After this program goes off, call that num number, and we are going to pray with you so that you can get to know Jesus Christ. All right? 252-563-5382. 5382. Write that number down. 252 563 5382. All right. And all these messages can be viewed on Facebook right here. Look at it again. Or you can go to YouTube and check it out. It'll be on YouTube in about 10 or 15 minutes after we go off. So check all this word out. We're here each and every Tuesday night at 7 30, each and every Thursday at 7 o'clock. And each and every Sunday morning, we'll be here this Sunday morning. And I don't know how many more Sundays we got. We're still praying, still trying to be led to do the right thing so that we can be safe. Amen. But right now, we're here each and every Sunday morning at 1015. But we are going back in the building. Amen. Soon and praise and worship God. But right now, amen, we're not. Until we get back there, tune in at 1015. And hear the word of the Lord. Man shall not live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Ladies, hear me, ladies. Keep fighting. Keep pressing. Watch what God's going to do. Satan already knows it's going to be big, bold, and beautiful. So he's putting up all kinds of fight. Now, there are several ways, ladies, you can be a blessing to Newness of Life Christian Center. Whether you are a man or a woman, that's right. Amen. You can be a blessing to Newness of Life Christian Center by writing out a check or a money order to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. Again, you can write out that check to Newness of Life Christian Center or N-O-L-C-C. The address is P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina. The zip code is 27886. All right. Now, also, you can download the Give Plus Church app. It's another way you can give to our ministry. Download the Give Plus Church app. 
Type in Newness of Life Christian Center or 27886 at Newness of Life Christian Center is going to pop up and you can sow a seed of any size. Sow that big seed because you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. If you sow sparingly, you can only reap sparingly. So give your best gift and watch God do it. Again, sow willingly. Don't do it grudgingly. Do it willingly so you can get the return on it. Also, if you would like to be a blessing to my wife and I, again, <clears throat> we thank God for how you blessed my wife during her birthday. We still thank, thank God. For, she appreciates that very, very much. Amen. But uh, if you would like to be a blessing to my wife and I for all that we do for the kingdom of God, you can go to your cash app. Go to your cash app. Hit that dollar sign. Type in the letter R and then type in the word determine. D-E-T-E-R. E R M I N E D. The word determined. Determine. Type in the dollar sign, the letter R, and the word determined. D E T E R M I N E D. All lower cases, all lowercase letters, and be a blessing to what is being a blessing to you. Okay, when you do it, my wife's face going to pop up so you'll know you're on the right track. All right? Okay. Yeah, Reese and Esther. All right. All right. Reese and Esther is going to pop up. All right. Thank you so much for watching tonight. We appreciate you. Don't forget, get our latest book, our latest book entitled, Let the Prophet Speak, Show Us Our Way. All right. Yeah. Got a call today. Thank you for the text and the calls that are being given concerning our books. We, uh, some are calling, talking about how I am my brother keeper, blessing them. Some are letting us know how Let the Prophet Speak is blessing them. They're letting us know how the Deaf Book is blessing them. All these 13 books are out here on the market to bless the world. And again, we give God all the glory. Amen. Better get it before we release number 14. Amen. Hallelujah. And then after that, number 15. And after that, we're going to drop the mic. We're going to oh. drop the pen. Call. <laughs> Amen. All right. Now, again, you can call to order your book at 252-641-0098. 252-641-0098. Or you can order it by cash app. Just, uh, again, go to the hit that dollar sign, the letter R, and the word determine, and specify which book you want or the book that you would like to have. And yeah, your address and your phone number so we can call or get the book out to you. Amen. Or there may be a problem. We want to make sure now. Yeah, all of our books to ship them out in the package that we do. Amen. Depending on where it is, normally it takes about four dollars and some and some change. But so we just say four dollars to get it out to you. OK. All right. We cover the change part, but we want to get the books into your hand. Thank you so much for watching tonight. Ladies, thank you for watching, as well as men. Thank you for getting that information, men, so you can apply it, be strengthened by it, so men can rise up. We don't need neighbors. We need some men like David, a man who can stand strong with the Abigails and be there and see these great women do great things. This is your time, women. They're trying to make sure you get paid right in the in, and making sure they the women stood up recently. Uh, because the uh, the the uh, March Madness people, the men had a nice looking gymnasium, a place to work out with in their exercise room. The ladies didn't. They changed that and got that right. Why? Because I'm telling you, it's time for you ladies. It's your time. I spoke this again in 2000 and about 14. Gave that God gave me that prophetic word that there will be women of substance, that women will have great character and women will have a whole lot of money and substance and support the kingdom before because it before it start happening. And I talk about the disparity between uh, men making more and women. All that is in this women's book before they even start Amen. talking about it. Amen. So the as a prophet, I was ahead of the game, just like we did with the book Death. And all this, God shows us things to come and we speak ahead of time. Amen. Of what's coming. And you need to stay with us until next time. You have a great night, ladies. Sunday. Yeah. Sunday at 1015. Come on, women. Go forth. See your dreams come to pass as you be that woman 
who's persistent. Yeah, I want to say hello to my granddaughter, Adalyn. Hey, amen. That's right. Amen. My little granddaughter. Hey, Adalyn, special little girl and her mom, Vanika. All right. Y'all ladies have a great night. God bless.